Just over a week ago, I was chatting with one of my Patreon supporters about what it was like to have autism. One of the questions he asked me was a question that I receive a lot, but to which I've never provided a public answer. He asked whether or not I would take a cure for autism if one day it could be offered to me. As you can already tell from the title of this video, the answer is no, I wouldn't take the cure, but I don't say that out of blind solidarity with my autistic brethren. I didn't come to this conclusion without serious contemplation. As somebody who suffers from autism on a daily basis, I have often been tempted to say that I would give anything to be rid of my autism-related issues. And I know that many of you listening have felt the same. Though I would still say no to a cure, it's not an emphatic no, like so many people readily give. In fact, there is one hypothetical situation where I still contemplate whether it might be okay to take a cure for autism. I'll get to that hypothetical situation in a moment, but for now, I'll explain why I think people with autism should say no to the idea of a cure, even if it means having to live with the pain that autism confers. The most important question, I believe, is whether or not a cure would get rid of all the symptoms, including both the positive and negative. I don't believe it would be possible to eradicate just the negative symptoms of autism and preserve all the positive. With that in mind, I wonder if it would be worth giving up the positive symptoms that I possess. For example, I possess above average intelligence, as a lot of autistic people do. By the way, I'm not patting myself on the back when I say that, although it is my favorite pastime. No, I'm speaking on a purely objective level. The last time I took an IQ test, I got a score of 130, which puts me, I think, in the top 2% of people in the world. A part of that intelligence is another symptom of autism, which is a heightened ability to detect patterns. If I didn't have that trait, I certainly would never have built up a career on YouTube doing video game analysis, a big portion of which is the ability to detect patterns that most people do not notice. Also, I have a higher degree of sensitivity, which isn't just a negative trait, by the way. Though I have experienced a fair share of physical and emotional pain in my life due to my hypersensitivity, it has gifted me with a level of patience, discipline, and empathy that I don't think many people have. By choosing to internalize that pain from time to time, I possess a higher level of control over my emotion. Not only that, I understand how truly awful the pain can be, and how awful it would be to inflict it on others. Don't get me wrong, sometimes the pain can become too intense. In those cases, it is best to have some sort of a meltdown in a safe, controlled environment. Having said that, though, choosing to wrestle with that pain does have benefits. It has allowed me to engage with people online who have their own share of unbearable problems and really appreciate the nature of their struggle. Thanks to that, I've been able to offer people strategies to cope with pain and, sometimes, help them overcome it. This discussion of the occasional necessity for pain invokes another reason why I would say no to a cure. Who is to say that what you refer to as a negative trait cannot be transformed into something positive? The pain that comes from having to go through these experiences builds both character and knowledge. Both of those things are valuable, if they are presented to the right people. In my case, I went through these experiences so that I could educate others about the realities of having autism. In doing that, I have provided validation to those with autism, as well as patience and understanding to those who don't have it. I get regular messages from people telling me that they have shared my videos with family members or friends and that their relationships are all the better for it. Those are the most meaningful, rewarding messages that I receive. They greatly sustain me through my own emotional struggles. If there was a cure for autism and I hadn't suffered through that pain, it's impossible to say whether I would have led an equally meaningful life. I'm not sure I would want to give up autism if it meant that I would miss the opportunity to be a part of this incredible community, to find hope for myself while at the same time sharing hope with others on a similar journey. Even if there was a cure that only got rid of the negative symptoms of autism, who is to say that being rid of those symptoms would be in your best interest? Everybody is born with limitations, and we work within those limitations to build character. If we didn't have limitations, we'd be boring people. If we didn't work to overcome those limitations, 
we'd be losers. Though we might not see the purpose of that pain in the moment, there often is one. Finally, if a cure were to be developed, we would need to ask ourselves the same existential question that people with mental illness ask themselves when they take antidepressants. Though we struggle with negative symptoms, those symptoms contribute to our sense of self. If you struggle with depression, for example, would you feel better if you took something that made you feel like a robot, unable to express any emotion? Speaking from personal experience, the first antidepressant I ever took was called Ciprolex, and it had the same effect on me. Let me tell you, the only thing more terrifying than crippling depression is a complete lack of emotion. If you don't feel emotion, then you lose something that helps define your personality. If you compromise your sensitivity, no matter how sensitive you are, wouldn't that make you lose a part of yourself? Now don't get me wrong, sometimes it will be necessary to take some form of medication in order to regulate something like sensitivity. Sometimes people are born with chemical imbalances and they require medication in order to live a normal happy life. However, regulating mental health issues is different from eliminating them altogether. Remember, we're talking about a full-on cure for autism, not a pill that helps us cope. If and when a cure is developed, you have to ask yourself whether you're willing to transform into a completely different person. If you're willing to do that, maybe think about who you're taking the cure for. Are you taking it for yourself? Or are you taking it because society wants you to? Wouldn't it be better to try and ask people around you to make one or two simple accommodations for you? like? not talking too loud or not taking issue with your inability to look them in the eye, wouldn't it be better to do that than to go through an irreversible transformation of the mind? Sure, the pain of dealing with autism might be grand, but maybe that pain is necessary, and without that pain, we might lose ourselves. But this is where I begin to struggle with my stance on a cure. Notice how I just said, maybe, that pain is necessary. Though some of the pain that comes with autism has paid off tremendously, there are other times where the pain seems to have no purpose whatsoever. There are more than a handful of extremely painful events that have transpired throughout my life, from when I was very young to, let's say, roughly a year ago. No, not even that. There are things that still have me boiling with resentment to this day. I won't go into the specific details of these events for obvious reasons, but I'll give an example that I think most autistic people can relate to. Let's say you felt embarrassed because you did something that was out of your control. Let's say you had a meltdown that you couldn't prevent, no matter how hard you tried. Or maybe you said or did something that was off-putting, but you didn't know it was off-putting because of your ignorance of social convention. There are times where events like this happen, and the pain that comes from it eventually makes us stronger. But then there are times where events like this happen, and no matter how hard you try to move on from it, to learn from it, the wound still festers. You and I know these people. You know, the ones that feel so righteously indignant over whatever you said or did that they will never let you forget it. Those are the type of people that are so malicious, so evil, that you lie awake at night wondering how that level of evil is even possible. How somebody could inflict that level of pain and be completely ignorant of what they're doing. Worst of all, you envy them for their ignorance for being unconscious of the pain they cause, while you have to carry that burden for the rest of your life. Having said that, I still think that it would still be worse to take the cure, because you would still lose your sense of identity, because you would lose some of your strengths. But there is one scenario that I've come up with where my answer might change. Now before I detail this scenario for you, I ask all of you for your patience and understanding. I'm not saying that a cure would be okay in this scenario. I'm just asking you to consider the scenario and respond to it as objectively as you can. Imagine that you learned you were about to have a baby. Now imagine that you lived in a world where medical technology had gotten to such a level of sophistication that we could determine whether or not a child would have autism before they were born. This would be before the child had begun to develop consciousness, before they had begun to develop their sense of self. After all, nobody remembers their time in the womb, right? Now I'd like to speak directly to the members of my audience who have autism. Think about the time in your life where the pain of autism was unbearable, the most unbearable. 
Maybe you struggle with the pain of that event to this day. Imagine you had the chance to prevent your child from dealing with immense and seemingly purposeless pain. What if you could give the cure to them while they were in the womb? They wouldn't have lost their sense of self on account of the cure because they never really had it to begin with. That's the scenario where I imagine it might, might, be okay to administer a cure. But even then, there are arguments that still go against taking the cure in this scenario. Let's say this baby grows up, right, and eventually learns that it had been given the cure. Maybe it would have liked being born with above-average intelligence, a perk that now it can never possess. Also, some might have religious objections to rewiring a child's brain in the womb. They might argue that because this is the brain that God gave them, this is the brain they should keep. I am sure there are other arguments to be presented, and I want to hear them from you. In the highly unlikely scenario that we could determine whether or not a child would have autism before birth, and then have the chance to administer a cure without side effects, would you give that child the cure? Let me know in the comment section below. Until we create these inconceivable advancements in medicine and technology, I will always advocate against the idea of a cure, and I believe you should as well. Like I said before, it's much easier for the average person to develop a minute level of patience and understanding than it is for an autistic person to try and have their biological makeup permanently transformed. Likely for the worse. Anyways, stay strong, my fellow autistic brethren, and until next time, stay yellow.